If you've been learning about Amazon Web Services, then you've probably created more than your share of EC2 instances. And when you're done with them and delete them, it's pretty easy to leave parts behind that are going to end up costing you money at the end of the month because they charge based on usage. So if you want to see how to delete an EC2 instance and check for some of the things that commonly get left behind, stay tuned because I'll show you how. It's actually pretty easy. All right, I've got an example right here. Inside of my EC2 instances, I've got one that is an Ubuntu server I spun up just to do a demonstration, and I don't need it anymore. So I'm kind of done with it, and I want to get rid of it. Well, deleting the EC2 instances is simple as going up here to Actions, and then coming down to Instant State, and under Instant State, choosing Terminate. Remember that Stop just turns it off, but it's still there. It doesn't get deleted, but Terminate will actually remove it. Now, if that option is grayed out for you, then you might have termination protection turned on. And so you might need to change that. If you go under the instant settings option, you'll see right here where we can choose change termination protection and you can turn that protection off. That's just a safety measure to make sure you don't accidentally delete an instance. But I, I don't have that turned on, so I can go to instant state and terminate. And that's gonna send the message up to Amazon saying, get rid of this instance. Now, if I just run with it like it is, it's going to delete the instance, but it might leave a few pieces behind. And this has been such a problem that Amazon's actually added some entries right here to help clean that up. You'll notice I've got release attached Elastic IPs. I have an Elastic IP attached to the system. If I delete the instance, I actually keep that IP because Amazon assumes I might want to assign it to another instance. If I don't want it, I need to check that off so that I don't get charged for it if I'm not using it. And the same thing goes with the volumes. If I have additional hard drives attached to it, I can choose to delete those volumes and get them out of there instead of letting them sit there and consume space in my account because I've got to pay a storage fee for any account that I've got. All right. So if I check those off, they can be deleted right here at the time. If I forget, I can always get it later. I'm going to go ahead and say yes, terminate and let that go. But let's say that somebody else did the termination, and I don't know if they chose to remove that. Well, I can do a quick glance on the left side over here. You can scroll down to Elastic IPs, and you can check and make sure that Elastic IP is gone. In my case, it is. If it wasn't, I could choose the IP, and I could go in and disassociate it if necessary, and then release it to actually get rid of it and not be paying. Same thing goes with the storage. Under Elastic Block Store, I can go to Volumes, and I'll see the volumes listed right there. And there's my Ubuntu volumes that are still there. Well. I'm still terminating. Terminating is not an instant thing. It's going to take a little bit of time. So I'll need to refresh this screen, which I can use that refresh button up top, and eventually those should go away. If they don't, I can come in, and just like an Elastic IP, I can check those, and you'll have the action up here to delete the volumes. Now, I can't delete them because they're currently attached to a live instance. I could detach it and force it, but it's usually better to just wait. We just need to wait a moment, and that instance will free those up. In fact, while I'm waiting on it, there's more that doesn't automatically get cleaned up. For example, if I've done backups with snapshots, the snapshots will stay behind. If I don't need those anymore, I need to come down to the snapshots area, find any snapshots that are left over, and get rid of those too, unless I want to keep that as a backup for my server, right? That's one other thing that can get kind of left behind. The last thing that gets left behind the most commonly uh, is one that doesn't cost us money. It just causes a mess, and that's security groups. When you launch an instance, if you just go with the default, AWS will create a security group for your server. You'll see something like this, Launch Wizard 1, Launch Wizard 2. If you do it long enough, there'll be Launch Wizard 577. It just gets kind of crazy. So if you're no longer using one of these security groups, it's a good idea to come in and just delete it out of there. Get rid of it if you don't need it. I usually make sure to name these appropriately so I know exactly which ones to get rid of. But usually whenever I see Launch Wizard, that's a pretty good indicator that I've got something I don't want. But up top, if I go back to my instances, I can see what security group that Ubuntu instance was using. If I just scroll all the way over to the side, I can see, oh, actually it's already been removed. It was a part of my lab web servers. So I'm not using Launch Wizard 1 or 2. I've, I've got some left over from other things. So I can go down here and I can wipe those out and take care of that. So that's another little cleanup task that I can knock out here real quick. I'll just choose Launch Wizard 1, Launch Wizard 2 and we'll delete those security groups. If I make a mistake and one of my instances is still using these, it'll actually warn me, so it protects me from myself. Now it's gone, and we should be good to go. I'm gonna go check out my volumes just one last time to make sure that those are cleaned up, and it looks like the main operating system one is gone, but my data volume got left behind. My data volume was the big one, and that's the one that's gonna cost me the most money to maintain, so I'm glad I checked. Now it's detached though, so I should be able to choose that, and under my actions, now I do have delete volume. I can get rid of that and it'll be gone. Or if I want, I could take a snapshot of it 
and it costs a little bit less to store a snapshot, but this will clear it out, and after a moment, I'll see that volume go away. Now, be aware that when you delete an instance, it doesn't disappear from your screen right away. It usually takes like six to 12 hours before it disappears, but as long as it says terminated, it's no longer costing you money. And that's the important part. While you're learning, you don't want to leave behind a bunch of extra stuff that costs you money. All right, well, that pretty much wraps up deleting an EC2 instance. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you want to learn more about Amazon Web Services or really any IT-related topic, be sure to check out our website, itpro.tv. We have a, a library that contains training content on technical skills as well as certification content for a number of technologies. Windows, Linux, Mac OS. We do Amazon Web Services, uh, Microsoft Azure. We have some developer content and pretty much whatever you want to learn. Jump on over, check it out. I think you'll enjoy it. I hope to see you there.